A few weeks ago, I shared with you the top 10 money mistakes that I've made in my life and I wish I would have avoided. It's not all bad though, because I've reached a high level of financial freedom. So today I will share with you the top five money best decisions that I've made in my life and how that can help you to achieve high financial freedom. I was 29 years old when I started saving money. Uh, with hindsight, it feels that it was actually quite late. But when I look at the student loans nowadays that most young people have, I actually feel quite lucky. And then I left my corporate life at the age of 44, having achieved high level of financial independence. And that means that basically I spent 15 years of my life saving money to achieve this financial freedom. When I started saving, it was about 20% per month that I was saving on my net salary. And progressively over the years, I've managed to increase that to reach 60% of my net salary. And I've been lucky to have a good job that took me to many different countries with a good salary that helped me to actually save quite a bit. But it was not only that, it was also managing lifestyle expenses to make sure that it was not going completely crazy uh, that allowed me to save quite a lot of money. Because it's very easy to increase uh, our expenses. The minute that we get a bonus, uh, a salary increase, we can jump right in and say, well, what about we're gonna just spend a bit more? Instead, take that opportunity to actually put some of this money right away into a saving account, into a pocket somewhere where you're not gonna touch it. And it's okay to indulge a bit. Uh, if you have like a certain increase in salary, you can say, well, you know what, I'm gonna reserve 30% to actually do something that I would like to do and which is fun for me. Uh, and I'll take the 70% and actually put it in my savings. Also make sure that you have a budget, that you count your money, because that's the only way to actually know where you're heading with your money and your savings. And once you know through your budget how much you can save every year, make sure that you make it automatic, that every time that you want to save something, it's done at the end of the month, you don't have to think about it, it goes straight from your account to another account. So saving was that best decision in my life. And if you want to learn how to do a budget and actually build that saving inside your budget, then look at this video here and in the description, I describe how you can build a budget to actually be happy with this budget. My childhood memories about money have been very much formed around the fact that we had a house and we bought it with quite a lot of debt. And so a lot of discussion in my family were always about the fact that we had 25 years to actually reimburse the debt of the house. That made me quite allergic to debt. So the first thing that I did when I started to earn money was to obviously repay my student debt so I would be debt free. Then it was a question of controlling my expenses so I could start to save. And one of the best things for saving was actually to meet my partner, Karen, uh, because we started to live together and I could save a lot of money on rent. We could save a lot of money on common cost actually. Now there are many other good things about my partnership apart from the financial side. So I started to count back then, I keep counting nowadays, so it's been actually 16 years of me counting all the money that I spend. And if I compare today to the past, well today I spend roughly 75% more than I was spending when I started counting. So 75% might seem a lot, but actually if you consider a bit of inflation every year and if you consider a little bit of lifestyle increase, uh, it's not too bad, and more importantly, that's actually what I can afford. And don't get me wrong, not all debts are bad, actually. It depends on why you've taken them and actually how much they will cost you to reimburse every month. A mortgage on a house, for instance, can be perfectly okay as long as you have a low interest rate and it contributes to a place that you want to live in for long term. But let me be clear on one bad one, and that's credit card debt. Okay, the rates are horrendous. They are from 15% up. It's highway robbery, basically. So if there is only one thing to do with credit card debt is not to have them. If you have them, then start to pay them off. Uh, that's the only way to eventually be able to save money. And same as before, have a budget, start to save, make sure that you actually repay your debt first so you can move on and save more. I like to take risks, but not completely crazy ones. Over the past 20 years, I've actually tried many different types of investments. And some have been good, and some have been not so good. But the good investment more than made up for the bad ones. And being early in some of them really paid off handsomely. For example, I invested in Bitcoin early, back in 2015, but then I left almost immediately, so I missed that train. 
But then I came back at the right moment in 2020 and so far that has given me a 5x return. Another one was to invest in things that I really believe in, robotics, technology, biotech, uh, all of those things were things that interested me. I invested in some specific funds uh, a few years ago. And you might know them, they are the ARK Invest funds. They are very famous because it's Cathie Woods as a fund manager and she has had a lot of success, not so much recently, but during the time that I had those funds, they were doing very, very well. So try new things. It might feel uncomfortable, but if you make some small bets, if you start with small amount of money on some things that you don't really know, then you can experience it. You can get some feedback and decide if it's good for you. Just remember to start with small bets, that will help you to eventually decide if you want to make bigger bets. One simple rule for investment is basically that if you put the money in and then you're getting some good returns, make sure that at some point you take that original money back so you're sure that you've never lost this. If you find what I'm talking about useful, then make sure that you smash the like button and also subscribe, uh, as well as put the notifications on if you want to hear more of this type of content in the future. Money is universal, but at the same time it's very personal. We all want to feel meaning in what we do, and so it's very important that when it's about personal finance, your investments are about who you are and how you want to project yourself. When I started investing, everything was about the return for me. I did not really care what it was. I did not have a lot of preoccupation about what type of investment I had. As a result, I had actually fairly limited interest in what I was investing in. And that made me listen to all kinds of people that did not necessarily have my financial interest in mind. And more importantly, it was not me. So progressively, what I started to do was to read more, to learn more, and to be able to understand actually what I was interested in investing in. I also added some ethical consideration to my investment. And two things happened. The first one is that I started to actually enjoy looking at my investment and actually talking about it, playing with it, learning about it. And the second thing that happened is because I was more interested in those investments, I was keener to actually learn about them. And as a result, I'm actually getting better return on investment for what I'm really interested in. So learn who you are, whether it's about personality tests to understand the type of personality you are, whether it's about tests which allow you to understand what type of investor you are, what are your core values, what are your strengths, all of that contributes to actually knowing what type of investor you are. And if you want to learn more about what type of investor you are and actually deciding how you want to invest based on that, then look at this video here and also in the description. I've mentioned this many times, but money education out there is really not good, particularly when you're young. And when I finished my studies, I had a better understanding of how to manage a company's money than actually my own money. So I started to read and learn about finance so I would increase my education level with regards to personal finance. And what you learn allows you to know what kind of investments are out there, so you know what you want to invest into, know what kind of scams are out there uh, and how to actually avoid them, learn the limits to what you will do for your investments or how much effort you will put in or whether you're going to need the help from someone and finally to get comfortable to try new investments. You want to learn more about money? Then watch my channel or any other YouTube channel, read books, uh, listen to audiobooks, whatever works for you, just make sure that you keep learning. If you want some suggestion, then take a look at the video description. There's quite a few books and interesting resources that you can use. And for the bonus tip, all of these, all those five, are not good at all if you do not have supporting legs. The first supporting leg is to find some good mentors, people who actually been there, done that, they know about the world of money, they know the good, the bad, the ugly, and they can tell you about it. The second supporting leg is make sure that you get some help. Uh, the world of personal finance is complicated. It's important that when you're lost, you actually find some people who can help you, like a personal finance coach, for instance. And the last leg, which is super important, is experiment. You gotta try what you actually learn about. You gotta actually get the bruises, try a few things, lose a bit of money here, hopefully make a lot of money there, 
uh, but do try. It's all about experience, it's all about learning. And the more you do, the less scary it is going to become. And I'm a personal finance coach, by the way, so if you're interested in getting some help uh, and you want to talk to me, then look in the video description, there's a link to how you can access me. So those were my five best decisions, but there are many others out there. So if you have some, actually, which are great ones, please do share with the community and put it in the comments. If you use those five best decisions and you avoid the top 10 mistakes that I've mentioned before, then you will be on your way to achieve very fast a high level of financial freedom. Go out there, learn, experiment and become the special agents of your money life. And I will see you next week.